When I first became a liturgist, I liked to focus on the different translations of a scripture and how different that could make them feel. Some, somewhere along the way, uh, Jeff started giving us the translation he wanted to fit into the sermon. And that was fine. But um, here's the first lesson. <laughs> Alleluia. Happiness comes to those who revere Awe, who revel in God's commands. Their children hold power on earth. The descendants of the just will always be blessed. There will be riches and wealth for their families. And God's justice can never be changed. For the just, Yahweh shines like a lamp in the dark. God is merciful, compassionate, and righteous. Good people are generous and lend money without interest. They are honest in all their dealings. They are never shaken because they love justice and will leave an imperishable memory behind them. They never fear bad news because their unwavering hearts trust in Yahweh. With peaceful hearts, they fear nothing. And in the end, they will triumph over their enemies. Quick to be generous, they give to the poor. Doing justice always and forever, their horn will always be filled in honor, or be lifted in honor. So, quite a long time ago, we had a performer here. I think it was in this, in this building. And I can't remember if they were a lecturer or a singer, but he talked about a woman who influenced him, and her light blazed. And I think it's really cool when you find someone whose light blazes, whose light shines. And if you haven't found someone, maybe you could be that light to someone else. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, Shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ooh, you guys sang that really great. It's one of those goodies. It is great, my friends in Christ, to be with you on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Lent, as we focus this morning on how we can light up as we continue to, to explore what are you up to? So a couple of weeks ago, I was here, and I encouraged you, and you said yes, to go on a treasure hunt. Remember? And so I'm curious, how's the hunt going? Remember, part of that treasure hunt was looking for the treasure in your heart, that treasure of heaven that doesn't rust or corrode that heart space. Has it been an easy, smooth journey? No. <laughs> I was gonna say, few pitfalls and surprises. <laughs> or has it been one of challenge after challenge after challenge? Well, guess what? The treasure is just around the corner. And I'm gonna give you a preview a sneak preview to show you what you will find inside. You want to see? Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da! 
inside are different sources of light. Inside, maybe a small lamp, a couple of tea lights, pillar candles, and maybe even a couple of nine hour emergency candles. Ooh, now what you thought, huh? <sighs> Next to the low, those lights is a scroll, a rolled up note from Jesus saying, you are here to be the light, bringing out the God colors in this world and shine. Wow, shine. And in our shining, if we are light bearers, God does not give us this light to hide it in a bucket or under a bushel, but to put it on a lampstand, put it on a hilltop and shine. When Jesus talks about shining, he isn't talking about finding opportunities where we get the attention and we're number one. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about being in such a way that God's love, God's light, God's justice shines through you. Some of you may be wondering, well, how do I do that? And I often look to the fruits of the Spirit to be indicators of how to be God's light in the world they include love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. You know, at different times in our lives, our light may shift in size and in type. And one time, at one time, we might be a little tea light. At another, a pillar, candlelight and even at another time, a nine-hour emergency candlelight. Each light shines strong. Each has a need and a purpose, shining the right amount of light for the right amount of time and at the right time. Jesus continues to name how to be light bearers, where he says, keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. Let's look at each one of these. We will shine when we keep open house, when we are a shelter to others, when we are welcoming for all people, animals, and plant life. When we keep an open house, we are offering spiritual hospitality, hospitality to all people who cross our paths each day. Well, what does that look like? In all honesty, that's going to look as different as each one of us and uniquely as each one of us is here today. It would be living out Amanda Gorman's words when she says, there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. As light bearers of God, we can shine the light on those forgotten in our community. Oftentimes, these are the children, the elderly, the sick. With young ones, light bearers shine on each one, delight in their unique beingness, and are playful with them. As light bearers, we encourage questions, even the outrageous ones, encouraging them to seek answers not only within themselves, but to observe who and what is around them, including the natural world. As light bearers with elders, we take time to listen. We express gratitude for their wisdom. And we can communicate in ways they un understand how much we still value them. And as light bearers to the sick, we pay attention to those who can't get medical help, 
because they don't have the insurance or even the money to buy medicine. We advocate for them when they do not know how or are unable to do so for themselves. We provide resources they may not even know that are available. We pay attention to their pain and remind them they're not alone. Providing an open house, providing spiritual hospitality and welcome is being willing to shine in all places, including the dark places, including those crevices of humanity where secrets are made, where woundedness is felt. And yet, light bearers still will shine God's light in those dark places. In doing so, we say, you wounded one, you matter. I see you. God sees you. God loves and cares for you. Come out of the crevices where you are hiding. Come away from those dark corners and be healed. Light bearers encourage those who have no voice to speak up, and we say, you do count. Your voice matters even when it's different from the majority. As light bearers, we encourage, guide, affirm their truth telling, and celebrate with them when they do speak up and share their stories as they speak from their personal experience. Seeing the light of God in others is just as important as being the light of God. When we witness, when we validate how others are being light bearers, that light not only continues to shine, but it spreads out from that circle, becomes wider, especially as we share that story with others. Two. We will shine when we are generous with our lives. This generosity includes a generosity of kindness, a generosity of compassion, a generosity of justice, and for me that means love and action. Being aware of the inequity around us and how we can use our privilege to benefit those who are experiencing inequity, housing inequity, food inequity, pay inequity, racial inequity, gender inequity, ableness inequity. Light bearers for God can be those whose light is a smile to a sick passerby who may be discouraged with life. A light bearer for God is one whose act of kindness of holding open a door for a mom carrying a fidgety toot toddler in her arms. A light bearer of God, of, for God is the librarian that shows a teen the books about what it means to be transgender. A light bearer for God stands up at the congregational meeting reminding the church of its mission and gives examples of how it has lost its way. A light bearer for God is the parent who sees how afraid their seven-year-old child is when they decide to wear pink sparkly sneakers to school for the first time and reminds them what a great choice that is. A light bearer for God is the restaurant owner who hires the person in front of him who has tattoos on their arms and neck and has large graps in their job resume. Three, we will shine by opening up to others. We will prompt people to open up to God. How can we open up to others? Hmm. I suggest we can do so by being authentic, being appropriately vulnerable, being honest and truth tellers, especially when others are trying to silence the truth. As we let others see how we are empowered by God to be and to do in the world, then others will follow our lead. 
But do we tell people around us about our relationship with God? What we do to feel connected to God on a regular basis? Do we let others know how God informs our decision making and choices? Do we share how our relationship with God gives us strength to persevere through suffering? Do we let others know how our relationship with the divine helps us to be courageous enough to do the hard things, especially when others around us disagree? Do we let our family members and friends become aware that it's God's presence that gives us the patience to be able to wait and hang on when we know not what the goal or what the end result or what the, even the way is? Have you told anyone about what inspires you? What gives you awe and wonder? When we shine by opening up to others and sharing our faith stories, others will listen, they'll pay attention, and then they too might open up to God. This last way of shining has been my life's work and has been my heart's deepest desire as I have walked with people along this spiritual journey, whether that's in a health crisis, dying, or at a particular life crossroads. My heart does a little flip-flop of joy when I experience and witness another get it. They see God in their lives. They feel God within them and can see God manifesting in the world around them. So my friends, think for a moment. Who have been the light bearers for you? Who have shined their light on you? Helping you, encouraging you, giving you solace until you too can become a light bearer. Remember, at different times in our lives, our light may shift in size and or type. One time we may be a small tea light, another time a strong pillar candlelight, and even another time a nine hour emergency candlelight. Each light shines strong. Each has a need and a purpose, shining the right amount of light for the right amount of time and at the right time. For myself, my light is a pillar candle. Shine when I first was raising children, providing a safe home and a spiritual sanctuary for raising them in the Christian faith. And when we lived overseas in Japan, my light was like a tiny little tea light as I meandered my way through discovering how to share and be the gospel in a land in a foreign country, not knowing the language. And yet God's light shone in surprising ways that I could not have predicted as I decided reluctantly to teach English and even English Bible study to my Japanese neighbors. With each shift in my call, God continued to say, you're here to be light. Bring out the God colors in the world. I make you, Aaron, a light bearer. And to be honest, sometimes I didn't want to be the light bearer. I wanted to hide my, my light under a bucket because I was afraid. And yet, I still move forward. I was afraid and I continue to be God's nine hour emergency light on the edges, at the hospital bed, in people's homes at the end of their lives. God's light peeked through my fear and continued to shine. The right amount of light for the right amount of time and at the right time, God's time. So, my friends, as light bearers, we shine, some of us on hilltops, others on a light stand, and still others in the hidden crevices and dark corners. 
of this world. And so I want to leave you with a blessing of hope from another light bearer, Jan Richardson. Listen to these words. Blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times, who testify to the endurance amid the undurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the brightness blazes, your heart a chapel, an altar, where in the deepest night can be seen the fire that shines forth in you. Shines forth in you in unaccountable faith, in stubborn hope, in love that illumines every broken thing it finds. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen.